writing a poem about a snail. Does anybody want to hear a poem about a snail? I'm not done with it. This is what we're doing now, right now. Through the sands, across the beach, I saw a slimy trail. I followed it for quite a while. It led to Quentin Snail. Quentin didn't like his shell, its color, shape, or scale. Quentin wanted something more, and so begins our tale. Quentin's shell had kept him dry through snow and rain torrential. Quentin's shell was quite the shell. His shell was quintessential. So why, oh why, did Quentin feel his shell had no potential? It seemed his shell stacked up to all the snaily shell credentials. Quentin sighed a tired sigh, a billowing exhale. Not the type of tired sigh you'd expect out of a snail. My shell could just be better, Quentin quickly caviled. I've seen so many better shells in all the times I've traveled. I think it's time for something new, a shell with some repute. A lavish, lovely, sumptuous shell to flaunt on my commute. Perched amongst the golden rod that lined the dunes to survey his seaside city on that very afternoon. He could surely find a better shell strewn in this lagoon. Finding seashells on a seashore seemed so very opportune. Quentin headed down the dunes to boldly start his quest to shed his boring, snaily shell he bitterly possessed and obtain a lavish, lovely shell, something with some zest. A shell that Lee liked better. A shell that was the best. Self-consciously he crossed the beach, feeling plain and drab, when he came across the sandy hole of a digging hermit crab. Pardon me, Quentin blurted out to the crustacean, would you trade your shell with me? He asked with kind persuasion. I suppose I'd trade it on for size, the hermit crab replied. Quentin was amazed, he thought he'd surely be denied. And so the hermit crab and snail agreed to make the swap. Quentin, ve Quentin felt victorious. He very, wait, Quentin felt victorious. He barely had to shop. Proudly Quentin strutted to the hermit. Proudly Quentin. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Proudly Quentin strutted in his hermit crabby chassis, hoping to be noticed by the beachy friends he passes. But soon his pace had slowed until he parked his brand new shell. Something wasn't right. He noticed such an awful smell. The gold that had been pecking in the trash left everywhere gagged at the aroma with a disapproving glare. He waddled it disgusted, blocking stinky Quentin's path. I mean no disrespect, but you must surely take a bath. The ocean is so near, you should possibly dive in. The scent that you're emitting should be regarded as a sin. My apologies, the shell is not my own, it's not my fault. I would love to take a bath, but I'm terrified of salt. Quentin bowed his head, it was clear how he felt. The shell was very stinky. But if he took a bath, he would melt. I could wash the shell for you, the gull proudly replied. 
Dip it in the ocean and wash the, shne wash the shell out from inside. You could wander around the beach free of all your stenches. I'd love to make a friendly smell less putrid and offensive. Quentin nodded slowly, but then his mood began to sway. Mr. Gull, have you seen other shells that seem to be okay? In fact, replied the Gull, I have seen such a shell that gave me such delight. Are you familiar with the oysters who have pearls so pearly white? A pearl, a jewel, a diamond. Could such luxuries exist? Please, oh please, said Quentin. I would love if you'd assist. The seagull ran his feather from his wing across his beak. I can find a fancy shell, the fancy shell you seek. The seagull took to flight with his eyes so fixedly gazed on the shells that lay just right beneath the slowly crashing waves. Down below the algae and the sand boomed by the tide. The oyster sat so stubborn, fighting for a place to hide. Oyster, oyster, do you feel content in your position? The seagull burbled through the murky, wavy sea's conditions. The oyster peeked out of his shell, nervously and timid. I'm battered by the quaint. I'm battered by the crashing waves. I may have reached my limit. I've often dreamed of life upon the dry and sandy shore. If Quentin were to trade with me, I might not be so sore. Just then an otter passing by the oyster and the gull swam to meet the duo with a splashy twist and roll. I overheard your conversation. I'm sorry to offend you, but did I hear correctly? Is a snail now on the menu? And that's as far as I've got. I don't know why I'm reading children's poems right now, but this is what I do in my spare time. Thanks for coming out, my boy.